What's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So, PlayStation has made another studio acquisition. They have acquired Firewalk Studios. Now, when I first saw this announcement on Twitter, I was like, I thought they already acquired Firewalk Studios, not because I had it confused with Fire Sprite, which is another studio that they already own and acquired, um, but because back in 2021, they had announced that they had a partnership with Firewalk Studios. And I guess because that was so long ago, my brain processed it as they, they already acquired them, but they didn't until now. So now they own them. So just a few details on this studio. It's based in Bellevue, Washington. Um, it's comprised of former Bungie, Call of Duty, and Destiny developers. Um, they're working on a new original multiplayer first-person shooter for PlayStation 5 and PC, and they have around 150 developers. This is most likely, what they're working on is most likely going to be one of the games that, uh, one of the live service uh, games that Jim Ryan has has mentioned. That's most likely what they're working on. So this acquisition is very similar to the Havens acquisition, in which PlayStation formed a partnership with these new studios comprised of former veterans. And somewhere along the lines of their development process, PlayStation decided to acquire them because they were either uh, satisfied with the progress that they made they're very impressed by the by the um by the game that they're making and playstation doesn't want to possibly uh let let them you know let anything go in the future because right now there seems to be <clears throat> because of course like there's consolidation in the industry right but based on what we've been told it's also about retaining talent that's one of the reasons why uh they gave Bungie that bonus, right? Because they were trying, they, they wanted to make sure uh, nobody at Bungie left. They wanted to retain talent. There's a lot of developers out there, but it doesn't seem that there's enough talented developers, like the upper echelon of talent to go around in the industry. So that's what uh, PlayStation is seemingly really trying to retain is the talent. They don't want to let anything, you know, pass them by because when you look at the look at other studios that they've um, let go after they had partners with them, well, let go as in they, they didn't they didn't acquire them. Um, they ended up regret re kind of regretting it, like uh, Sumo Digital, uh, Ready at Dawn. Um, what's the other one that that made that horror game? You could say you could say maybe Quantic Dream or Supermassive Games. Those are studios that they partnered up with, and and made a few games for them. And then, you know, they ended up getting acquired by other publishers. And I think PlayStation doesn't want to risk that anymore. And that's one of the reasons why they're, they're trying, they're acquiring these studios before they even make anything. The only thing I hope is that Herman Holst and whoever else is, you know, analyzing these projects, these titles that these studios are making, I hope they have good judgment. Because if you acquire these studios before they actually release anything and you don't get you don't get to see, you know, how the public reacts, how to how the media reacts, you don't get to see what people actually think about it. This is solely based on your judgment. So I hope your judgment on the on the titles and the IPs that they're that they're working on, since you're acquiring them, you, you clearly find what they're doing so impressive. I hope your judgment is good. That's the only thing I can hope. Otherwise, these acquisitions are going to look stupid. It's either going to you're either going to look like an absolute genius for acquiring them before they uh, before they release a game or you're going to look or you're going to have egg on your face and you're going to end up looking stupid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll see as far as how do how do I feel about these these acquisition acquisitions? I don't feel any type of way. Um, I won't. I don't have an opinion until they release a game, until I at least see what the game is. You know, it, it's hard for me to say like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this acquisition or no, I think this is this is dumb. No, I, I have to see the game first until they show a game. There's really no opinion I could have. I said the same thing for Havens. I even said the same thing for Bungie because I don't like Destiny. So it really is contingent upon the new IP that Bungie is working, working on. So yeah, there's no real way for me to have an, have an opinion on if, if I like this move or if I dislike it, 
No, I just I, I literally just have to wait to see how it how it uh, turns out because there's no way to judge them right now. These and it is I, I would say I will say it is it does seem to be a smart move. This is the new way of building a studio from the ground up. It's, it's virtually the same thing. You may not have actually built the studio, but acquiring them in their infancy stages um, after you partnered up with them before they even made a game. That's pretty much building a studio from from the ground up because you're believing in them before they even do anything. And this is a risk that PlayStation seems to be OK with taking um, because they have they kind of have a history of taking no name studios because that's what Havens and Firewalk are. They're no name studios who have nothing under their belt, no real resume as 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 a studio. And now you're going to take them, you're going to um, <clears throat> help them evolve and nurture them to be a great part, hopefully a great part of PlayStation first party studios. That seems to be the plan. Um, and we've seen them do that with several studios that they have now, Guerrilla Games, Naughty Dog. When you look at the, the origin and the starting point of a lot of studio, a lot of, a lot of the studios that they own, it was very humble beginnings. If you look at the first games a lot of these studios own, you would never ever guess that they would ever produce the games that they're producing now so i think that's the plan and it's going to be a little bit expedited i guess because these studios these brand new studios are already working on triple a games you know what i'm saying like a lot of these uh playstation first party studios started off with something smaller in scope and in size and in budget and, and then gradually grew up to make something like a very expensive, you know, triple A game with high production value and, you know, the 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 deep gameplay mechanics and all that stuff. But a lot of these studios studios out the gate are going to be making that because we haven't seen any of these live service games yet. None of them. So I assume at this rumored uh, showcase that's supposed to be coming out in May, I'm not like I'm not hanging my hat on that if I want to believe that. Um, but that's the rumor. So I expect to see some of these first these uh, these uh, games as a service games at this showcase if it's actually happening. PlayStation clearly has a different approach when it comes to these acquisitions. I I don't I'm not for the consolidation of the of the in industry uh, as far as buying publishers go. And you know, my, Microsoft and Sony are approaching this this differently. And, and there's not a wrong or right way to do it. PlayStation is is betting on um, the talent uh, and putting their faith into new studios who don't have much. Because listen, this acquiring Havens and Firewalk probably cost them little to nothing because these studios don't own anything. They, the only thing they are is an a, a, an office with a bunch of employees. So that's what you're paying for: the office and a bunch of a bunch of employees, 150. They have they don't have any IP under their belt. So it's kind of like a, a project that you want to raise up to, you know, it, it's, it's a long term thing where it could pay off dividends very early if the project that they're working on is very impressive. Even though I don't think there's necessarily a wrong or right way to make acquisitions, when publishers do acquire a new studio, I do prefer it to be a studio that a smaller studio, because then you can actually help them right? You can build them up. I prefer to be a studio that actually needs help. Now, I don't necessarily think the, the giant publisher buying a, another giant publisher really does anything for us as, as gamers. I don't think it really changes much because those, those publishers didn't really have a money issue to begin with. They didn't have a resource issue to begin with. So I don't know if, if much changes by them being acquired, right? But with but if you acquire a smaller a studio that makes smaller games and indie games, double A games, those resources and those and, and that money definitely will impact them in a positive way and help them make better games. So that's why I I like to see that more than publishers buying publishers. So yeah, I'm I don't want PlayStation and Sony to acquire any publisher. I've said that for the, for the long time. I'm okay with them doing this and building up studios to be better. So those are my thoughts on it. Um, let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button. Follow, the, uh, follow me on Twitter. 
and hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload a video. I'll catch y'all next time. I'm out. Peace.